Making buildings in a small scale, like for Battletech maps, is a difficult skill to pick up in a lot of ways here. Um, one that I don't have a lot of experience with. That being said, I've decided to start off with going and making some bunkers. These are pillbox style bunkers based off of various bunkers uh, uh, created, built in World War II. The, these are intended to be um, mounted to hexes, which is what I have done here, uh, and they are one hex bunkers for infantry to use specifically. We're going to start small before we start going up to larger buildings. So, on this project today, I'm going to run you through my various steps that I went through to create these bunkers. Let's get started. Let's start off with the supplies that we're going to be using for this. Um, these are going to be based off of our standard, uh, in my case, one and three quarters inch hex tiles, which uh, you can see uh, in a prior video. These are going to be the basis for these. Um, the bunkers themselves, I'm actually going to be creating mostly out of scrap. Two of them are going to be hexagonal based, uh, and we're going to be using another hex but we're going to be using scrap XPS foam aside. I'm going to be using hot glue to attach these. That's my Sure Bonder hot glue gun. The scrap, we just kind of have to make sure we've got enough scrap for about 20, 30 millimeters on a side. For attaching the flocking, we're going to be using weld bond and the flocking will be our standard burnt grass here. For paints, we're going to be using gray and black. This is literally just a very cheap gray. I've also got my uh, black wash here. This is made using a floor polish, which has got an acrylic base. Uh, any black wash will do, even thin down paint. This is our black uh, bomb material. This is a Mod Podge uh, matte mixed with black paint. We're going to be using a standard Ulfa knife. Well, this is a heavy duty one, but we're going to be using an Ulfa knife uh, and my favorite pen here, a little Paper Mate fine tipped um, medium black marker. Here we can get into focus. There you go. These work really well. Now we're going to be focusing on a couple of different shapes primarily and then going with a couple of weird shapes for a couple more. These are going to be permanently based onto some hexes so that uh, this will will flushly fit with the other tiles in the hex system. Alright, we're going to go and start off with the most basic shape which is the square. Uh, in this case I found that getting the hexes to be or the, the, little, the bunkers to be a little bit less than 30 millimeters is a pretty good size to fit on top of the base here. So I'm just simply taking some scrap and we're going to run this through our hot wire cutter at something like less than 30, 30 millimeters, less than 3 centimeters. You can see the gauge marking on the machine itself there. I'm just going to make two of these and then cut these down into basically perfect squares. That's it. Uh, this is going to be the, the two square bunkers that we're going to build. Next, I want to go ahead and thin this down a little bit here. I don't think a full half inch looks the best for standard infantry bunkers. At about uh, one level in height, they're probably about 15 feet. So I'm just going to shave a little bit of this down so that it is a little bit less than half of an inch thick. I'm just going to do this equally for both of them here just to shave a few millimeters off the top of that. I think it looks better uh, that way. Next, we're going to go ahead and take two of our hexagons and trim them down. We're going to shave about a, about a half a centimeter, about five millimeters off a side to make these smaller hexagons to set on top of the other hexagons. Hexagons um, and squares both, uh, when I was looking uh, online, seem to show up as valid shapes. And I mean, the hexagon makes sense to me because you can you can easily put something uh, in each direction here to cover most of your of your angles, and you can see it'll sit right on top of that. All right, now we have the little more confusing ones. So 
For the first of these, I'm going to cut out a square that is, uh, at this point, three centimeters. I'm just going to go with a straight three centimeter square for this part here. Let's go ahead and get that cut real quick. And then we're going to be put, putting in a bevel on the edges. So just like so, and just like so, three centimeters. Next, we're going to go ahead and move our uh, low profile fence here. Uh, uh, and we, uh, let's go and start with, uh, we'll do two of these at three centimeters. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move our low profile fence in a little bit for the first one here to do a bevel. Uh, to make it look um, different. This is going to be look look more like like an aircraft hangar or something like that. So to do this, I, uh, I just I move it in and I put the the bottom corner at the cutting line, like so. I will grip it from both sides and rather than pulling on the material, I'm going to try and lock my hands in place. And I'm going to pull my entire body backwards. I find this is a much more stable way to do this cutting here. So. Just resting on the edge like that at about a centimeter and push it in and I just tilt backwards to push it through just like that and we're gonna do the same thing on the other sides lock it in and just tilt my body backwards to push it through and good enough all right and you can see yeah, I'm just going to go and cut that uh, that little section off there to shorten this up a little bit. And there you go. You can see how this is going to fit on the base. Now for this other design, we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to try and tilt this on the side. In this case, I am um, putting the corner at the base and then the other corner at one of the markings and then do the same thing. Grift on both sides and pull backwards. And then I put the flat down, and then I'm going to be pulling backwards, and just the same way here. And you know, I think this is good. this is good. Uh, this gives us a kind of interesting looking shape for placing a bunker down. All right, the base outline of the bunkers are done. The next step is going to be doing the doors uh, and as and the window slits so let's go ahead and do that now so there's going to be two types of windows we're going to be putting in uh, there is going i'm just going to be shaving this down a little bit here um, uh, two types of windows or or uh, gun ports are going to put, be putting in one of them is going to be a simple slit uh, which encompasses a section of the uh, of, there we go that looks better that encompasses a section of the material. The other is going to be drawn in windows. I happen to think that the the, the slit viewport um, looks the best uh, the way I've, I'm doing this and is the easiest to do with a hot wire cutter. But uh, I'm going to show you both of them. We're gonna we're gonna try one of each on each of these two different shapes. So the first type of gun port is going to be the slit. We're going to take our our uh, blank here, our shape, and we're going to be cutting it about two thirds or a little bit more of the way through on its end like this at a height that seems to be appropriate. Uh, and we're going to go ahead, maybe do that a couple times potentially, and you're going to see that we're going to get a slit that goes through there. Um, if I uh, go back and do this again, I'd probably do this on a much higher setting to get more of the burn going in, but you can see what we have. Uh, we've got a slit in the square. This is basically going to be equivalent to a, 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 a fully open gun port style slit rather than enclosed windows. Let's go ahead and do it on this one as well here. So we do the same thing. We're just going to turn it up on its side. And we're going to go ahead and cut it about two thirds of the way in. Gripping on both sides and, and moving my entire body as opposed to trying to manipulate just the, the uh, foam there. Alright, and here is the one for the hexagon. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. So 
At this point, we've done all of the cutting that we're going to be doing for these. The next step is to d put in doors for these. Uh, this is where the Sharpie comes in. Um, the Sharpie actually does quite a decent indentation, and I'm just going to do these freehand, something that looks appropriate. We're just going to be putting in basically black holes for these. I'm not going to be decorating these. These are going to be basically painted black in the end anyway, but I'm just going to draw these in like this because it gives us an indentation. I, I, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do also on top of this some beveling of the edges with my knife. But uh, I will uh, go over that with you here in just a second. So in this case, uh, we choose one of the sides for the hexagon. We're going to put the door right here. Same thing um, with this particular marker. It presses into the foam really easily. Uh, it does come off really easy, so it is a good way to make a mess on your hands, but it gets the job done. And then one more door for this weird one here. Um, and for whatever reason, I, I, I sort of have a tendency to place a lot of these off center, but this one is going to be a little more centered here. The idea being uh, these are sort of um, hastily constructed. They, they, they don't have any real doors on them. There's, a, there's an opening in the back. This is a place for infantry to hunker down and shoot out at oncoming infantry. Um, so we don't need to put gun ports in the back because there's an open spacing for that. So those are the three with the slit type of gun port. What we're going to do then is for the other ones, we're going to draw them in. So uh, for this, for instance, let's go and put the door on one side here. Just like so. And we're just going to press that in with this, uh, with this marker here. Uh, and then I'm just going to do this by hand very roughly. Um, I'm going to do a, a long gun port on each side. Just like this. This is You could do this with a ruler. I think this is fine by hand for what we're, what we're doing at this point here. As my skills improve, I'm certain that I will change my mind later, but... Uh, and we're going to do sort of the same thing here. We're just going to draw it in, make something that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and do uh, put windows on all of these others here, uh, either one large one or some uh, smaller ones. And the next thing I want to do, show you real quick here, is how I go through and do some just some quick notching on the edges of the tops. So here's what I mean. Um, I'm just going to put a little, uh, this is for the, this one with a couple of windows here. I'm just going to put a little notch in the corner uh, uh, towards the back, and I'm just going to carve in slightly to that to give me a little bit of a bevel on this. I've seen this in the pictures of several different um, bunkers from World War II, and uh, I kind of like the appearance. It makes it look a little bit different here. So, uh, But I'm just going to go ahead and do that for several of these as well. So, after you've gotten them all done and glued to your bases, we're going to hit them with a coat of our Mod Podge mixture. In this case, I've already done that and let it dry, and then I'm going to go back over this with some black paint just to darken everything in. And this is a real real quick step. This is sort of like priming the miniatures. So I'm just going to take, take this as a little palette here, dip this into some black paint, and sort of smush it on the palette. And... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and paint these all and darken them up before the next step. Okay, here's the next step. We're going to make these concrete-ish. So this is going to be just a straight application of gray, cheap craft paint. I'm going to squirt some on the palette here. That should be plenty. And we're just going to take our brush and we're going to paint over these. Now, uh, I am going to try and be a little more careful um, when painting these. Uh, so that uh, the slits don't get any kind of paint in them. The same with the doorway. If I do get some there, I am going to go back and take care of that, like in here. I'll go and take care of that later, uh, make sure that uh, it is all blackened. Uh, so like on the back we're here with the door. Yeah, let's just sort of push that out there, or push it in, so at least we have something to, to wash into. 
and on the back we'll uh, try and keep the doorway you can see how it looks when it's painted like this we'll try and keep it uh, just fine and uh, that's pretty much all we're going to be doing for this part of it here I'm going to go ahead and quickly do this for the others And with the paint all dry, we're going to be putting a black wash on them. Let's just take a look at how these, these look with the windows that I've covered. So this was a black wash is uh, basically a type of floor polish that is acrylic based. This used to be called Future Floor Polish back in the day. It's currently Pledge multi-surface finish if, if you look up um, future online you can you can see there but this has some India ink in it I, I, I think this makes a spectacular black wash personally I've just got a little container here and I'm just going to brush a little bit on just like that try to get a little bit some of that off there it's going to cover all of the gray in that I'm gonna go ahead and do this real quick and then we're gonna let it dry All right, now that's all dried, we're going to go ahead and go into flocking these bases here. You can see what it, uh, uh, what this looks like with the dried uh, black wash on there. Um, and I think it looks perfectly fine, especially we're going to be looking at this from a few feet away. This gets the idea across, which is the important thing. All right, let's go ahead and get to flocking. I'm going to be using, uh, like I said, our uh, PVA. And, and in this case, I'm going to be using, yeah, there we go. Uh, and we're just going to be pushing the PVA onto the flat surfaces and then applying the flocking. So let's go ahead and do one of these real quick here. Got a little brush there with the uh, glue. You can see I'm going to grab this piece of paper here to use as a uh, backstop. And we're literally just going to go through. If you get some that, that kind of trails up the side, that's no big deal. Uh, I guess it'll kind of look like... Um, grass or something that's trying to grow up the side of this concrete bunker. We can stay in focus, thank you very much. Ah, auto-focusing. Um, let's go ahead and finish getting this applied and then we will go from there and just sprinkle on the, the flocking. Okay, so on the paper, grab our flocking, Woodland Scenics Fine Turf Burnt Grass. And we're just going to cover it just like that. We're going to set that aside to dry. Let's go ahead and finish the last of them off here. So there we have it, back to our original image here. We'll take a look at each of these in turn. So I've made a total of six bunkers, two square, two hexagon, and two of the odd shapes. The hexagon with the slit is a really straightforward one here. Um, it is cut down most of the way, uh, and then we have the door on the back. If you prefer windows, you can get an appearance that looks like this, where you have a door on one side and then a, in this case, I've put a centralized window uh, in, or gun port on each of the other faces of the hex. Changing over to the square, you can see how the, uh, we sort of have those cuts at the top there in addition to the 
the slit gun port and the door in the back. I actually kind of like this one. It's very simple, um, but I think it definitely gets the point across here. Uh, if you prefer windows, this is how it looks with some windows instead of the big sort of central gun port slit. I don't like doing the windows as much after I've done this. It's, it is a lot more convenient to make a cut into the foam as opposed to hand drawing all of these, but this is what it looks like when I took this approach. So we go this with this, uh, this other look, which is kind of in between the two with the slit. I think this actually looks pretty good. It's got a point that, ju uh, that juts out, uh, and then you have the flat section in the back where you can put a door. I think this actually looks uh, pretty decent. This one or the square, I think, is actually my favorite of the group. And then finally, we have this other bunker. I'm not really sure about this one in truth. I don't really think I like the long windows. This also reminds me more of a hanger for a um, something than it actually does like a infantry bunker. But if you like the look, there you go. So there it is. Uh, and then to give us a, another look at everything in turn again, here we are one more time with the full lot of them on my little rotating stand here. Uh, overall, I'm actually I'm actually pretty pleased with the way these come out here. Um, I'm I'm having to give some thought into using this particular foam in larger buildings um, and deciding on how I want to do those. But that is for a future project. If there's anything that you'd like me to build, if you have any suggestions, go ahead and leave them in the comments. I will be glad to tackle whatever I can, and I'm giving some thought as to what the next part of this will be here. I've also got some other builds coming up of various natures, uh, so if you have any comments, though, I would love to hear them. So, as always, uh, I do want to thank you for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed this, found something interesting, or found a tidbit that's useful for you. And as always... Have a good day.